Welcome to this lecture on the April 19 loan charge. The background and how it works. My name is Dean Wooten. Now some of you may have heard of the April 19 loan charge. It's going to get a lot more press as we approach uh, April 19. Uh, but the background to it, it's, it's essentially part of a very aggressive remuneration structure. Normally involving offshore employee benefit trusts, EBTs. Now generally... In this arrangement, uh, the company, normally the actor's company, say, uh, pays cash to an EBT. The company then takes the CT deduction on that employee benefit trust contribution. Uh, the EBT then lends money uh, to the UK employee. There are no repayment terms. It's expected to be repaid, but there are no repayment terms. Now, this loan effectively replaces taxable salary. So the actor, whoever it is that's got this arrangement, they have use of the money, um, but it's as a loan, not salary. Contractor loans are very similar, using umbrella structures with salaries and loans, so it's all part of the same pot. So the beauty of these arrangements uh, used to be that they are loans, not earnings. Uh, it is an employee or employment-related loan, so therefore you do get a beneficial loan charge, um, but that's really low. Uh, the income is effectively the loan times the HMRC official rate of interest. So multiply that by your marginal rate and you're looking at a, an effective tax rate of 1% to 2% of the money made available to you. Now that compares to 40 45% plus NIC if you were to take it as earnings. Now these arrangements, they are widely used by actors, celebrities, very wealthy people, the Paradise Papers uh, on the television a few months back, uh, that did highlight the, the widespread use of these arrangements. Now, over the years, they have been targeted. Uh, so, and we're going to look at the history uh, to from where they started uh, to where we are now. So, strike one, the Dextra case, 2005. Now, in the Dextra case, uh, it's been held there's no corporation tax deduction in the company until the EBT contribution has been used to pay earnings. Loans are not earnings, so effectively, Dextra denied the corporation tax relief. This is now enacted uh, in uh, the Corporation Tax Act 2009. So the corporation tax deduction uh, was effectively stopped, um, but it didn't address the income tax avoidance by the employee, so it's still attractive for some. Strike two. Income the Disguise Remuneration Rules. These were announced in December 2010 and they were enacted in FA 2011 as part of the employment income through third party legislation in ITEPA. And this treats certain payments from third parties as subject to income tax and national insurance. Those third parties could be EBTs. Now, the gateway to a disguised remuneration charge is a couple of points. An arrangement with an employer to provide a reward to an employee, followed by the taking by a third party of a relevant step in pursuance of that arrangement. Relevant step could quite easily be making a loan. So the money the EBT's got, they then make a loan uh, to the individual. Now that today would be regarded as disguised remuneration and the value of the loan would then be charged to tax and national insurance. So it essentially stopped the fundamental aspects of the scheme. Um, but it did not apply to pre-December 2010 loans. So the legislation came in uh, in 2010 and uh, since then we've had new schemes popping up trying to exploit loopholes in the disguised remuneration rules. But every finance act, we seem to have something uh, trying to tighten them even further. Strike three, uh, the April 19 loan charge. This has been enacted in Schedule 11 of Finance Act Number 2, 2017. Now, this applies to pre-December 2010 loans and new post-2010 loans. So it's retrospective. It's been backdated to the 6th of April 1999. 
So whilst uh, the disguise remuneration rules applied going forward, this one, uh, the April 19 loan charge, it applies going forward and backwards. Um, so it's a widespread, let's catch everything that's gone before, uh, after, after April 1999, that is. Now, you could avoid by repaying the loan, uh, but you try telling that to, to an actor sitting on a £5 million loan, uh, that if they repay their loan by April 19, they don't have to worry about the loan charge. Uh, most of these people would not have that kind of money available now. Now, if you are going to repay the loan, it must be in cash. You cannot use assets to settle. So what will the tax charge be uh, on the 5th of April 2019? Uh, it will all be income tax, NNI, on the value of all the loans outstanding at the 5th of April 2019. The charge will fall in 1819, therefore. The effective rate is 60.8% of the loan. That's the tax and the national insurance. The government are expecting to raise around two billion pounds. You could defer that if the loan is an approved fixed term loan, but that would be unusual. Most of these aren't that. Now, see if we're bringing the, the effectively the, the loan outstanding in as it earnings on the fifth of April nineteen, then there will be no beneficial loan charge after April nineteen because effectively it's been taxed as earnings. Well, that concludes uh, the first part uh, of this uh, two-part lecture on the April 19 loan charge. Now we've got a pretty good idea what it is. It's those clients that have engaged in these disguised remuneration charges over the years, since 1999, and they've still got those loans from EBTs that are unrepaid or not repaid yet. Now we have a date approaching that will be extremely important for them. Now in the second lecture, uh, we're going to look at the mechanics of how we do this, whether we should do this, etc.